first meet Michael Jackson, you're in awe. It, it's Michael Jackson. I always with my brothers and sisters in front of the television and saying, wow, that's amazing. Michael's coming on, Michael's coming on. His moves are like words and, you know, he's like an encyclopedia. He never embraced color. He never really cared about that, but he never forgot where he came from either. His hugs were the deepest and, and the most sincere, heartfelt hugs. I loved them. I mean, you could tell first meeting that, that he was a genius. It didn't take uh, much thinking to figure that out. He was an angel walking the planet. Michael was just the loveliest soul. And I always left having had an experience with Michael where I felt that I came out the other side looking at the world differently, looking at myself differently. I would feel a little bit too much feel the world. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of the world. We'll, we'll weave that yeah, in. We'll weave that in. The first time I met Michael, we were in rehearsals for Remember the Time, a short film. And it was very, you know, surreal, cosmic. Just felt very natural to me. I worked a long time in the industry. And then I got to go with Michael. And I learned a lot of things from Michael. And there are things that I use every day in my work and in my life. That's the kind of guy he was. He'd share things with you if you were interested. He called me out of the blue. I think it was the late 80s. And my goddaughter was at the house, and she answered the phone. And, and she screamed across the house, which is not uncommon in my household. Uncle Kenny, some guy's on the phone saying it's Michael Jackson. So I quickly grabbed the phone. I was like, hello, and it was that familiar voice. Kenny? And I was like, Michael, I'm so sorry. And he was like, that's OK. It happens to me all the time. Uh, Turn the control and go back to yeah. magic moment. Yeah. One of my first memories was in 1987, when he first came to the Smooth Criminal set. He walks over to me. And he comes really, really close, and he's looking at me, and he goes, who did your makeup? And I said, I did. And he goes, I like your eyes. And I thought I was going to melt. <laughs> that was my first encounter with Michael Jackson. I got a call that I was on the short list for, for Michael. He was looking for musical directors. I went down, got on the keyboards to start playing, and then we're waiting for Michael, and then uh, MJ comes in, and as soon as he comes in, I'm playing, he just starts dancing and immediately. And then he starts singing, and then we stop, we hug, embrace, talk a little bit, and play some more, and I would ask him to sing things. And he was so vibrant and passionate, and happy, he looked great, he sounded great. We did a concert for about a half an hour. So it'll be different, different sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just doing that now so you see it. It'll be a I met him and, you know, he didn't speak a lot. He was very shy. And, you know, that's what a lot of people know he is, you know. And um, he always smile at me and bow to me and, and say, that was great, you know. Over the years, he got more comfortable enough to speak with me more and uh, spend some time with me. <laughs> All the dancers were, they were like starstruck. I don't know how else to put it. It's easy to do. But at the same time, the, within seconds of meeting him, he's, he was a sweetheart. Yeah, an absolute sweetheart and just a good guy. So um, I, I think that barrier got broken very, very quickly. And uh, he was a very approachable man. I remember early days when I was walking through the corridor of center staging, and this was just after I auditioned. And um, I was walking down there and it was Michael and his bodyguard. And I didn't know whether to run into the nearest room and hide because I was like so nervous or, uh, or say hello. And so I just said to myself, I'm just gonna say hello. Let's <laughs> see what happens. So I went up to him and I said, oh, hi, how are you? And, and he goes, oh, really good. And he grabbed my hand and shook my hand. And he said, God bless you, I'll see you soon. And 
and it made me smile. I was just happy for the rest of the day. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> the first concert I did with him at Madison Square Garden, you know, throughout re rehearsal, he would have these loud sonic hand claps. And me and Jonathan would be like, wow, these claps are loud, man. How, I mean, I can't even hear it. They're that loud. And do you know, I was so thankful for those hand claps because the first night at the Madison Square Garden, there were so many people screaming. I couldn't even barely hear myself. To hear actual time and meter, I was thankful for those hand claps. Obviously, he would know how it is in a live experience. I want to be starting something. I played, played a little funky solo, and he puts his arms around me. The day before he died was the first time that I actually, after I did the solo, I didn't go back to my station. I stood there, and I looked in his eyes, and he looked back at me. And I mean, something went through me that was so powerful, and he smiled, and I smiled back. And it was the most powerful feeling in the world. I mean, happy feeling. <laughs> <laughs> you see, they don't look that good anymore. People probably don't think of him uh, in terms of a funny person, but he was very, very funny. And I always, uh, like, people have called him Peter Pan, but I always think he's like, Peter Pan laughing his, his ass off. We first moved to LA and my son, you know, was like in pre-kindergarten. You know, and he was, you know, struggling a little bit, wasn't real happy. It came time for show and tell. And uh, I said, Gee, Dominic, what are you going to do for show and tell? He said, well, I want to bring muscles. Muscles was Michael's boa. And I said, I better think of something else. I'm scared to death of snakes, so I'm not bringing it. So I mentioned it to Michael, and he said, oh, yeah, you can take the snake. Go ahead. I said, Michael, oh, you know I'm afraid of snakes. I'm not touching that snake. He said, well, I'll go. You'll go. I said, you can't go to show and tell. No, I will. We go to the school, the whole place all fell out. My son was like the hero forever. I couldn't believe anybody would do something like that. I mean, that, to me, that's amazing. That's a going above and beyond a client or a friend. Or I mean, that, that's the kind of guy he was. You know, he was a real guy. I remember one time he invited me to Neverland, and he said, pack a few things, and if you don't feel like going, you can stay. And I did. I think I stayed for three days. I remember sitting in two easy chairs, having a conversation, a creative conversation, and an elephant walked past the window. And Michael didn't even skip a beat, he just kept going, and I went, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, that might have just been lassie to you, but for me, that was like Africa, I just walked past the window. <laughs> Can we take a moment and just, and he giggled, you know, and he was just, he was lovely. <laughs> um, the mic is in the coat. Uh, that'll be on fire. <laughs> yeah, that'll be on fire. And so we have to, Randall, we have to work out <laughs> We would sit and look online, and I'd say, how long has it been since you've seen this? <laughs> like, oh, where did you get that? I'm like, everything's possible. You can find it online. Really? It's like, yeah. Want to see 93, Mexico City? You know, and then we'd do that, and we'd listen to a lot of Janet Jackson music. We always talked about the knowledge, though. I and love said it. it's I, love, uh, I dance to it to this day. It's so I'm my like, own, yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. it. It just gets inside of me. We would listen to just anything, you know, whatever, wherever the mood took us. I love pushing the TV all the way. Okay, good. So, yeah, me too. I, <laughs> I love it. As we were having our meetings, sometimes we would sit in a room for six or eight hours talking about the show and the progression in great, great detail. And if he was referring to Thriller, he would begin quietly to sing it, yes. um, illustrating what he wanted to happen in a certain chorus. And the room would just go quiet. You couldn't keep yourself conversational when Michael Jackson was singing, even under his breath. But it's going to be very operatic. Beautiful. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very operatic. Yeah. I think his thoughts came out through his songs, and the songs became his thoughts. And then the Billie Jean, he does the routine with the hat, and he dances under this one single spotlight, and it was just him and me. 
all the rest of the band would stop and we just go for like three, four minutes. And then I'd play my heart and my soul out to try to evoke a, a dream great performance out of him. And I would connect with him and I watch him so closely. He was my dance partner and I will always treasure that. And um, that's magic of life. Okay. Subliminally, though. Yeah, yeah. You become compassionate. Michael, while we were working on some music one day, he said to me, he says, Beard, and you know, you know what our name means? He says, well, our name means one who's most like God. And I said, ooh, I kind of set up like this, like, ooh, yeah. He said, no, 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 no. We got to be humble. We got to be humble. And I could see he was getting serious, so I said, well... I'm humble, MJ. Well, why are you so serious about this? And he said, well, I don't want God to take our gifts away. So if we're not humble, it, you know, he'll, he'll take our gifts away. I said, well, that's, that's you know, I don't think that's going to happen. And I said, and I think your gifts are a little greater than mine. He said, then he really got mad at me. He said, no, 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 don't say that, don't say that. And he was really serious. I said, well, well, why, MJ, why are you saying that? He says, because you're here with me and I'm here with you. And we have to use our gifts together to help others figure out what their gifts are. I just shut up. Because he had the humanity and he, he actually cared about it. He actually cared about people. Let's do a sound check for black or white. I remember every day he'd come into rehearsal. He would take his towel and put it on my keyboard. And he would ask me if it's okay. And I'd be like, what are you talking about? This is your house. This is house was made for you. I mean, I'm just a part of it. I'm here to support you. Whatever you need to do, brother, like, you know, thank you for asking, but you don't have to ask. The next day, he'd come in. There would be no convenient place for him to put his towel. He'd be like, he'd put the towel, he'd be like, you know, I'd be playing, and he would say, is it okay? And I'd be like, of course it is. I mean, just the way he was raised, it was just that old school gentleness. The thing that I don't think people realize about Michael is that he was an innocent person. If you really understood him, you'd understand where he was coming from. It was just a very innocent place. There's a difference between innocent and naive. Michael Jackson was not a naive person. And anybody that would think that is off their rocker. He was a very bright, talented, observant person. No matter how hard Sometimes the world came down on him. He only reacted back with more love. Often, when we were working together, or in a meeting, we would be in a meeting, and if things got a little tense or there was a little anxiety, or, you know, he would just say, do it with love, and you know, L-O-V-E, love. With love, L-O-V-E. With the love, with the love, L-O-V-E. No, it's all for love. It's coming there. We'll get it there. A lot of people don't know. When we did the Victory Tour in 1984, he was out there sweating and dancing every show and all the rehearsals to get to that show, those shows. He was out there on the stage under all those lights, hundreds of lights, sweating and working hard, breaking his body down for not a dime. He gave all of his five million away. Every night for all of those months, he did it for free. And I think that aspect of Michael is equally as impressive and remarkable is the musical side of Michael. His lasting legacy will be his music for the fans, the great short films that he made, and for a lot of us who were close to him, his legacy will be his great friendship and the great sense of humor that he had. Some people got to experience it, some people didn't. I'm just one of the lucky guys in life. It's my friend Mike. I have a picture here that my eight-year-old daughter uh, drew in remembrance of Michael. And um, that goes to show you what such a great guy Michael is because he's still getting to young kids. And that's saying something. He was just, uh, just such a caring, loving, giving creature. And... You know, his art just came through him. Once every several centuries of mankind, God sends somebody special. 
a wake up call, somebody to enlighten the people in the way to be, somebody to excite the people, somebody to bring people together. And I think Michael is a gift from God that he sent to show people how to be, how to love. He's simply the best, he's simply the kindest, and he's simply the greatest. You know, the Lord takes him away from you, but at the same time, it's a great thing because I know he's in a better place, you know. He was passionate in his work. He was passionate in his life. He loved, loved his children, and they love him. Boy, do they love him. He was a king, you know, a king of hearts, and a king of entertainers, and a king of imagination, you know, and a king of a father, and, and a king of a friend. And uh, really, you know, um, if I could, I would have crowned him myself. that change.